Hi everyone and welcome back. It's me again, Ian, with more Audi TT Mark II mods, fixes and upgrades. This time around, what we're going to be doing is continuing on from the last video where I showed you a complete teardown and rebuild of 17Z Brembo brake calipers. In this video, what I'll be looking at is the installation of the kit into the car. Now, not only do the brakes look amazing now, thanks to Fappen Fabrications, you can find his Instagram link down in the details below, but I've also got some two-piece floating rotors from Brakes Direct up in Queensland. They're a Forza two-piece rotor, which look absolutely incredible, and I can't wait for you to see them. There's an unboxing including in this video. They look great as well as fit very, very nicely too. So let's not wait any longer and just jump right in. Move in slowly so you can see what I've got. So in here are the brake pads and some part numbers there for you. They're the nuts to help fit the calipers onto the hubs. In the big box are the two-piece rotors some flare nut spanners there to make sure the brake lines don't round out. These lines are from the TT 3.2 which will be the same as the TTS lines. In this black plastic I've got the master cylinder that I need to upgrade. And then obviously the calipers here freshly rebuilt and there's the other one and that is the rebuild kit that I used from Big Red now finally these little thingies here they're going to be used as spacers basically they'll slot into these holes to take the gap for where the bolts go. All right, so let's take note of the two liter front wheel drive brakes before I take off the wheel bolt covers and the bolts. All right, so now that I've got the wheel off, what I'm going to do is just do a dry fit on the one side, just to make sure that when I do go and put the wheel back on, that everything fits. So with 17 Zs, apparently um, anything from 18 inch and up size rims should fit, but this is the first time that I'm using all of this kit. So I just really wanna make sure that it's all gonna fit before I go ahead and bleed the brakes, bleed the ABS, change the master cylinder and just to find that the wheel actually doesn't fit. Uh, fingers crossed that it all works and that the custom rotors along with all the custom bolts and the fittings uh, goes on nice and smoothly. So here we go. Sorry about the blurriness here everyone, but I forgot to change the autofocus setting. But basically I've disconnected the brake pad sensor there. Let's just wait for it to go back into focus. There we go. Now the socket size there is 21 mil for the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the hub. Now doing all this work, especially doing the dry fit first, does take a lot of time. But to make everything much more time efficient, I do like to use a rattle gun to do all of the unbolting and refitting of everything. And then there's a final talking at the very, very end of the install. Now that I've got the two mounting bolts removed, it's time to release the caliper from the mounting hub. But you can see here I'm having a little bit of trouble taking it off. And that's because I have not yet released the pressure of the brake pads onto the disc. So you'll see in a second, I'm going to grab a screwdriver 
and just pop it into the veins of the rotor and then leverage it so that the pistons can retract a little bit, releasing the pressure, which then allows the caliper to be removed. Easy. Now on a good day, the rotor will ideally just come off, but sometimes slash most of the time, you're gonna find it a little bit difficult just to release it by hand. So some force is needed. Now I didn't have any rubber mallet to help me out here. So I just used a block of wood and I was um, using a dead blow hammer on that to release the rotor from the hub. And there's a really nice clear view of the hub. So I just wanna give it a bit of a clean as well. All right, so these are the rotors that I've ordered in from Brakes Direct. They're a custom two-piece rotor. So I've not opened them yet. This is the first time that I'm going to be seeing them direct from Queensland, from the guys at Brakes Direct. I um, was messaging them back and forth to make sure I was gonna get the measurements that I needed. So basically I asked them to make a top hat that has the Audi TT fitment. However, the rotor part, so the disc part where the um, rotor and the brake pad rub is to the spec of the 17 Zs. So let's have a look and see what these are like from the pictures they were showing me that actually looked very, very nice. So I'm really excited to open these. Um, oh, look at that. What's this? We've got some merch by the looks. So there are Forza Rotor. Cool. What's that? <laughs> Some Hoonigan t-shirts by the looks of things. <laughs> we'll be rocking those one day, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. So, let's get to these rotors. Just make sure that you guys can see that. Excellent. All right, so we can see that they're boxed up individually. Uh, they're going to be directional. So, you can see one is called J-A-R and J-A-L. I'm assuming right, left. So the one we're working on is the left or passenger side. So let's uh, get that one opened up. Whoa, alrighty. So they look really, really nice. Um, I don't want to take them out of the plastic, but have a look at that. Nice and weighty. Quality is excellent. There's a big L on there just to make sure I get it right. And they're a custom two-piece. So So I can see they're super thick. Um, and you've got the date of manufacture on the back there. And there's that custom top hat that's made to the TT size. So that's going to be hub centric to the uh, TT hub. And they're at five by 112. And this should line up perfectly. Whereas when you're using the typical ML Mercedes discs, uh, these holes might not line up properly. All right, so let's try this sucker on the car. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna grab the uh, two liter front wheel drive disc and just hold it on top just to compare. Let me unclip for a second. I'm back. Alrighty, so just to compare, we've got that guy versus that guy on top there. So it might be a little bit difficult to see, but yeah, it's definitely bigger. It's not a lot bigger and that's the way that I wanted it. Didn't want too much extra weight going onto the car there. So that's a 330 mil and I forget the spec of this, but I'll look it up later on and I'll add it to the um, screen. So this is where things start to look really nice and I'm getting really excited about using all of this hardware. So I'm mounting the rotor onto the hub here and because everything is perfect to the hub, you'll see that it'll 
center itself there perfectly no issues there and then I can use the countersunk bolt to hold the rotor onto the hub Now that's on there, it's time to see how they rotate with the heat shield on. So you can kind of hear there's a little bit of fouling happening. So what needs to happen is the rotor needs to come off again, and then the dust shield actually needs to come off. So they use the same bolt as the countersunk screw there, so T30 Torx. Initially, I did try to keep the dust shield on the hub there, uh, but it didn't seem like there was enough room for it to bend back, especially towards the middle where it mounts onto the hub. There was no way that was going to change shape at all, so this is why I've decided to run without it. So as you can see, it is super easy to take that dust shield off. It's just three T30 Torx bolts and it comes off right away. Now what I'm doing here now is just replacing these bolts just to make sure those uh, bore holes where the bolts fit into don't you know rust over or anything like that. And that way if I do need to refit that dust shield, I've got the fittings there for it. So now that's sorted, there's no more dust shield to foul the rotor. We can mount the rotor back onto the hub again. It looks really, really nice. Now remember how I mentioned that these are directional rotors? There's actually a laser etching on the edge there to tell you which way the rotors should be rotating when moving forward. Now it's time to test mount the calipers. So what I'm going to do is just show you how these bolts and that uh, piece of tubing acting as a spacer works. So you can see that the bolt and the spacer go into the bolt holes together. Now we're using these spacers because the original bolts that mount these calipers onto their respective cars, they're bigger cars and so they use bigger bolts. With using the hardware that fits into the TT knuckle or the TT spindle or hub, they take smaller bolts. And so we're using that piece of tubing to take up that space so that there's no play. So as I'm putting these bolts in, I'm seeing that everything lines up quite nicely. It is a little bit tight though, but there is good clearance between all of the components.
Okay, so clearances are super tight, but the calipers are on, all the bolts fit up. I had to get a special, or not a special tool, but I had to buy a 21 mil open-ended spanner here just to make sure that I could hold the nut on the inside while I was wrenching on the bolt head. Um, so if you don't have one of those and you're gonna go get all of the part numbers from Audi or VW that I've um, listed at the beginning of the video, make sure you've got a 21 mil open-ended spanner uh, to make sure you can get that nut and bolt assembly on in order to have the caliper sit on the hub properly. So I'm going to zoom in now or take a closer look at how close all the clearances are. So you'll see uh, the pin for the brake pad is super close to the edge of the rotor. Also there are these pins in the caliper that are super edged to the face of the rotor. And then the bolt um, end is really close to the inside edge of the rotor as well. Right, so taking a closer look, you can see it all looks pretty fantastic. Now just so that you guys can see, that's how close the clearance is to the pin, to the edge of the disc there. The other place that it's quite close, but it, it clears, it definitely clears, are the, I think they're called bobbins, or these fittings here. Very close to that edge, but not touching. And then the edge of the rotor to the edge of the caliper here is very close but perfect and then on the inside I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this for you because it's quite um, close and my camera might not be able to focus but let's try to bring it back where are we you can see that there we go there's sort of like the pin which is this thing here to the edge of the rotor on both sides it's quite close but not touching and then you can see there's the end of the bolt to the face of the rotor getting the Brembo spec ones premium ceramic they are the P85065N uh, and you can see here they're for the Q7, KN, Q something, Toreg, which is what this um, caliper is from. Alright, so I'm going to have to mute myself for a second there. Do not listen to the part number that I just mentioned because it's actually the wrong pad. <laughs> I emailed the guys at Brakes Direct and I did get the pad type and pad number verified with them. What I'd actually ordered were the 18Z pads. When the 17Z calipers have a slightly different part number and also a slightly different height, which you'll see later on in the video is going to be significant, which one you order because of the height. So what I'm going to do is display the correct numbers for each respective caliper type that you can get on the screen now. Okay. Did that red thing come off? No. It's fine. Is there any sort of grease in there that we need to use? Rambo sticker for the face, but I'm not going to use them. All right, so I'm getting super excited now that pretty much one of the last components of this brake assembly to be fitted is going in and it's just test fitting that the brake pads have enough clearance in the caliper housing while the rotor is on. 
Now this is where the excitement kind of drops because as you can see I'm having some troubles fitting the pin back in and that's because I've got the wrong brake pads. So in this picture here you can see what I've needed to do to make the brake pads fit. Basically on the face side of the brake pads I ground down some material so it didn't touch the outside of the top hat. After a bit of work and grinding down the pads enough, you can see now that there is definitely clearance between the brake pad and the edge of that top hat. And now, definitely, the pin actually slides in quite easily compared to before. And last but not least, it's time to refit the wheels back onto the hub. Thank you birds, I think they're just as excited as I am. <laughs> oh. Finally the dry fit of the wheel is on and you can see it is quite tight and as I'm rotating the assembly now that these three wheel bolts are in, I'm finding that it's too tight and it actually doesn't turn, so it's no good. <laughs> and you can see here just how close everything is. Okay, so you can see this edge here. It's way too close for comfort. And if I were to rotate that wheel, it would most likely touch. So it looks like I need to either space that out or grind a little bit off the caliper. Okay, so now that I'm confident that the setup is going to fit after all those little wee modifications, I am going to apply some pressure onto the brake pedal here. Now all I'm doing, as you can see, is pushing that brake pedal with the um, block of wood. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've got a block of wood under here which is pressing um, up against the bar that goes from one side of the seat to the other. And then there's a, this block of wood that you can see there which is pressing now on the brake pedal. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a vacuum at the, um, at the brake caliper so that when I open it up on the one side, I won't get a lot of fluid loss. So first things first for the wet fit is to remove the old brake line from the fender. Now you'll see here when I finally do remove it, only a little bit of fluid comes out, but then that's it. It doesn't continue to drip. This is the replacement line from the 3.2. It does have a slightly different length to it and the end of the fitting also allows for a little hard line to be fitted on there whereas the 2 litre front wheel drive line has its fitting for the caliper already on it and that one won't thread into the 6 pot Brembo brakes. You can see there as I'm fitting the 3.2 line to the hard line coming out of the fender that nothing else is dripping out of the hard line. And so that's the result of pushing on the brake pedal and jamming it in place. All right, so let's switch up the view so you can get a really nice good look at what things look like from behind the hub. So here I'm just going to be removing the front wheel drive calipers with the 21mm socket. Now that the front wheel drive caliper's off, I'm just going to tighten the 
3.2 fitting here to the flexible line and then replace the securing clip. Now just a quick note here where the securing clips go, there is a keyway that the lines have to be fitted into very specifically, otherwise they won't slot in. Do you have lock tight? All right, so just making sure I've got the T30 Torx bit ready for when I mount the upgraded rotor onto the hub. All right, so just secure it on there with a countersunk bolt and time to mount the calipers again. But this time I'm actually going to be hooking up the brake fluid lines as well. All right, so let's switch to the rear view again so that you can see how the bolts go in from the back and also how I use that 21 mil open end spanner to get the nuts into the rear of the hub or the front facing of the hub sorry so that I can tighten the bolt with my rattle gun. So just another little tip here what I found to be the easiest to do was to insert the bolt and that spacer tube in as one unit and then the brake caliper will align itself onto the hub as you insert it. This is where I use that 21 mil open-ended spanner to hold the nut in place very loosely while I push on the bolt to then start threading it onto the nut. Now this is where it's quite hard to find much information online in regards to how these calipers actually fit onto the hubs on an Audi TT Mark II. There's a lot of posts saying you can't use aluminium hubs because they're too thick, you can't use these bolts, you have to do it this way, you have to use this kit, etc. But with some measurements and research into part numbers, I was able to find the perfect set of nuts and bolts to be able to secure this onto the hub. And also I was able to figure out that you can just insert that 21 mil spanner in between the caliper and the rotor to be able to hold that nut in place while you threaded or started the threads and then you can tighten the bolts. So you can see here exactly how I insert that spanner into the gap between the caliper and the rotor to start threading the nut in place. So you might find that you'll need to reposition that spanner, but there's plenty of space for you to work with. Again, I'm accessing that nut from a different position where you can see that yes, there is a lot of space and this is just me doing the sort of final tightening with the rattle gun before I torque them up. Now that the caliper is secured in place, we can move on to fitting the hard line. So this is the hard line that I uh, bought over from the 3.2. I believe it should be the same shape on the TTS as well since they use the same calipers. Now you'll see here that I'm having a bit of a you know, time fiddling with which way the hard line would go. So all I was doing was deciding which way would be the best to have the hard line run parallel or as parallel to the brake caliper. And then what I'll need to do, and you can see exactly what I've done here, is that it does need to be bent out a little bit so it doesn't foul. So here I've decided that's the way it's going to run and there is bend number one where I'm just opening up that angle a little bit so that we've got some extra clearance from the caliper. Now what I'm doing here is just loosely securing that hard line onto the caliper and you can see that top section needs to be bent out a little bit so that it doesn't foul where the bleed nipple is.
So as I'm holding the hard line up towards the flexible line, I can still see that it does need to push out a little bit more. So I'm just bending it bit by bit, and that's completely fine to do as these lines are quite flexible, but then at the same time, strong enough to hold their shape once you've decided their final positioning. All right, so I'm happy with the positioning of the hard line. So I'm just going to secure the fittings now with the flare nut spanners. And it seems like the birds are on my side as each time I've reached a milestone, they're squawking at me as well. <laughs> So we know we're on the home run once we start cleaning parts. So this is where it gets a little bit more exciting again. So just cleaning up the calipers now from all my dirty hand marks and then you want to clean up the rotor as well. Now as I'm spinning the rotor I can feel that there's no resistance or any type of grinding at all which is a really really good sign. So now I just want to add the grease that's supplied with the brake pads onto the back so that they don't squeal or make funny noises. I found that there's actually a little bit too much grease in these little sachets so you don't really need much at all just as long as you can get a thin coverage on the back where the red section is that's going to be fine. We're almost there guys, thanks for hanging in there for the long haul. So this is the part where you need to get that securing clip or the tensioning spring which holds the calipers in place. And finally that locating pin goes in. And you'll see now how easily it does go in compared to the first time when I did the dry fit where it definitely didn't fit. It was off by a few mil and that's because I'd ordered the wrong brake pads. And then one of the final steps is just to add that securing bolt to the locating pin and then you want to torque these up. Alright, so now you've seen how incredible the brakes look on the car. I just like to take a few seconds to shout out to Brakes Direct. Uh, Greg and his team have been super helpful in working with me to get these two-piece rotors to the size and spec that I wanted and also Fappen Fabrications. Alex, you're a legend for helping me uh, clean those dirty as 17 Zs from the wreckers. So guys, once again, thanks so much for joining me and hope to see you next time. But before we go, I just want to remind everyone what these brakes were like before and also the size difference and the massive change now that they're clean.
If you'd like to see more videos in regards to upgrades and mods for your Audi TT Mark II, please remember to subscribe, like and click the notifications bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any more Audi TT Mark II content. Thanks and see you next time.